It was just a plastic Halloween skeleton dangling from our large oak tree in the front yard. We'd put it there in the middle of September, despite our neighborhood's best wishes. They didn't quite understand our enthusiasm for the holiday, and those same hypocritical folks were putting plastic Santa Clauses on their lawn come November 1st. Back to the skeleton. It was a cheapo run-of-the-mill Halloween decoration. You've probably seen your fair share at dollar stores, Halloween pop-ups, and big box retailers. Now that I've had time to think about it, I'm pretty sure it even glowed in the dark, which meant it just barely glowed at all. As a kid, however, it was always the coolest thing to me. It's truly amazing how the mundane bewilders children. One of the reasons I cherish that skeleton so much was because of all the memories I had of the thing. Every Halloween, Mom and Dad would take me around the block as they ushered me to the front doors of complete strangers, now people I know by name, as I pleaded for a Reese's or Kit Kat. Halloween is such a strange time of year, but I remember those chilly autumn nights almost more than Christmas morning. As we'd walk home from the house at the end of the cul-de-sac, Dad would tease me about the spooky skeleton swaying in the breeze down the road. Mom would turn off her flashlight, and ever so faintly, I could make out the glow of the swaying ghoul. I'd always scream, and my parents would laugh. Dad would bend down and pick me up by the sides of my dinosaur costume and blink down the road at the cheap prop. It's okay to be afraid, bud but never let it rule your life. I would confidently nod, and my dad would hug me and set me down. I'd rush off toward the house and sit beneath the wind-dancing skeleton in the grassy yard, sorting through all the good candy for me and the rest for dad. He never minded. He especially loved the coconut chocolates, the stuff I always loathed as a child. I'd get bitten up by ants after a few minutes, but I suppose the excitement of eating candy kept me planted on the lawn. Dad didn't mind, but Mom did. Uh, Well, that is if I ate too much candy before bedtime. Before I drift off into dreamland, Dad would always promise a scary story before he tucked me in. Usually it was one of his own, typically something about his time of the war, maybe emphasized by ghosts or zombies, but... One Halloween, the most memorable of all, he read me a passage from the Bible. It was a Bible he tucked away inside my dresser drawer, an heirloom from my great-grandfather when he too was in the service. The passage he read was from Ezekiel, the story of the Valley of Dry Bones, and how God would breathe into them and raise the corpses from the dead. As he said this, my dad would raise the pitch of his voice and point forebodingly to the skeleton hanging from the tree. You know, he would say, growing more serious in his tone, one day, I'm not going to be here for you, bud. One day, you're going to have to face your fears on your own. But don't worry. I'll always be there with you. See you in the morning. I'd smile and nod. I didn't entirely understand the concept of death. I thought skeletons were nothing more than spooky Halloween-themed monsters. Eh, Well, the truth of the matter was that skeletons, as Halloween-y as they were, were hiding inside of us all just waiting for death to set them free. Eventually I'd learn. Dad was called back on tour, and after only a few months of being away, did Mom get the call? It was difficult for her, I'm sure. Not only on her behalf, but on mine, trying to explain to his seven-year-old that dad wasn't coming back, ever. That must have been rough on mom. Maybe 
for Christmas, I said, hopefully. So we can see Santa together? My mom would shake her head with a tear in her eye. No, baby, she sniffled. Not ever. It's just you and me now, okay? Okay, mommy. I realized now that my childlike optimism was painful for my mother to bear. Every few days I'd ask if dad was coming home and I, I didn't entirely grasp the concept of death. When they had the funeral service for dad, they chose to have a closed casket as mom and Nana didn't want me to see dad. Not like that. Will he come out of there? I'd say, pointing to the casket. No, sweetie, Nana said. Your daddy's got to rest, okay? I nod, still without a clue. I suppose ignorance is bliss. Children always have it easy, even when they don't. Halloween would come and go. It was never the same without Dad and his stories. Mom would take me around the block and hang the decorations. The same now-faded skeleton jangling from the oak tree. It wasn't scary anymore. And as the years went by, it reminded me more and more of Dad. Eventually, I had lost interest in trick-or-treating, opting to stay inside and watch scary movies, which, for a ten-year-old, were about as intense as Casper. I wouldn't even bother going outside for candy, as my mom would buy a baggie from the grocery store and fill a small pail on the front porch, and every now and then, um, every now and again, I'd sneak a treat for myself. <sighs> Before going into a candy-induced coma, I managed to make my way to my bedroom. Hobbling over to my window to close the blinds, I noticed something hanging from the oak tree, silhouetted by an orange hue from the neighbor's lights. It was a skeleton, but it had grown longer, taller, it was now a far darker color. I tiptoed down the hallway, past my sleeping mother's room, and flipped on the front patio light. And that's when I saw it. The skeleton was wrapped in muscle. Tissue and tendons surrounded the plastic bones. And for a brief moment, I could see skin slowly sliding up the corpse. I hid behind the front door for a moment, catching my breath, and on the verge of waking my sleeping mother with a shriek, I peered around the wooden facade and saw the skeleton, now anything but plastic, hopped down from the rope it was bound by. The corpse, now nearly a full-size person, yanked one of the sheet ghosts from the tree, tying the white fabric across its naked body. I flicked the light off, ducking down while still watching the figure in my front yard. It must have noticed because it turned its head to face me. And that's when I saw it. It was Dad. He smiled at me through the glass and waved. I stood up, pressing my face to the cold glass. And as I did, something flashed behind my dad's body at the end of the street, causing him to turn and look toward it. It was a bright, Glowing light, brighter than anything I've ever seen. He turned back to me and smiled, mouthing something as he did. He turned, facing the light, and gradually made his way toward it, eventually being engulfed in the shining radiance. And after he met with the light, it disappeared just as quickly as it appeared. I felt a warm tear roll down my cheek, now pulled away from the icy window, as if finally I'd realized that while my dad was gone, I'd somehow see him again. 
only ascertained by the words, I now believe, were what my dad mouthed to me. See you in the morning. Halloween is and will always be my favorite holiday. It reminds me that after each All Hallows Eve, there's a bright morning. Hmm.